Well, this isn't good news. It looks like the long-awaited Grand Theft Auto 6 might not be hitting stores as soon as we all thought it would be, and we may even have to wait for quite a while yet before we're able to get our hands on it. This had been rumoured amongst other industry insiders for a while now, and it looks like recent comments have confirmed it. There does appear to be valid reasons as to why this is the case. We'll be going into further detail in a moment, but let's just say that you can colour us disappointed as we haven't had a new Grand Theft Auto title since 2013, almost a decade ago now, and we were really hoping that we were going to be able to play this one sometime this year. So with that being said, and with apologies for being the bearer of bad news today, be sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell, because today we're going to be looking at why Grand Theft Auto 6 may have just been delayed. The story that broke many Grand Theft Auto fans' hearts was very recently reported by multiple sources from around the industry, one of which being a UK newspaper, The Express. They claim that for the time being at least, Rockstar was remaining committed to working on GTA V and producing more content for the title, namely the game's online mode. Now this does make a lot of sense in many respects, as Grand Theft Auto V has proven to be the biggest cash cow the developers have ever had on their hands, with income coming from the online mode alone dwarfing anything they've gotten from other titles they've released in the past, including the mighty Red Dead Redemption series. But even with that being said, it's still very disappointing to hear this news if it's true, because it suggests that the company are paying more focus and attention to profits and the ever unpopular microtransactions, while neglecting producing new quality games for consumers. This is a slippery slope to start going down, and we all know what it has led for the likes of EA in the past, so we hope that it isn't as bad as it sounds, but it's certainly got us worried. But that's just the headline. Let's take a minute now and break down why The Express, as well as many other sources and gaming insiders, now believe that Grand Theft Auto 6 will be delayed. As we've already mentioned, rumours had been swirling amongst industry analysts for a couple of months now that the expected 2020 release date for the next GTA title would be pushed back to 2021, and this was down to recent comments made by Rockstar's parent company Take-Two that appears to have proven this correct. Speaking on their plans for 2020 at a recent investors call meeting, Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick was asked about when we could all expect to hear the announcement for a new AAA title from Rockstar. Take-Two had previously stated that they aspire to release a new game every year, so it seemed like an innocuous enough question. Sadly, his response spoke volumes, as Zelnick told the investor, We have 11 franchises that have sold at least 5 million units within one release, as well as new intellectual property, and we are working on the most robust pipeline in our history. So we're amazingly excited about it. That said, we haven't been able to achieve our goal of having a strong frontline release schedule in every year, even in the recent past. While these comments don't directly reference GTA 6 or any specific title, reading between the lines it seems pretty apparent that he's letting us know not to expect a new AAA game from Rockstar this year, mostly because they have so many active IPs out there, they would just be spreading themselves too thin to do so. With the next expected title released by the company being the sixth entry in the iconic franchise, we're only left to assume a new Grand Theft Auto game isn't coming in 2020. Now in some ways you could look at this as a positive, as who wants a bad GTA game made by an exhausted and overworked staff who can't give it their all? Surely that wouldn't benefit anyone as fans would get a subpar game and Rockstar would then have to deal with the subsequent angry wrath of those fans. But thinking about it in that way makes perfect sense, and even seems like a good thing, but when you really break down Zelnik's comments after this, concerns become more apparent. He added, What has been great though is we built a company that has these very strong underpinnings of catalogue titles and ongoing titles that live on in the hearts and minds of our consumers, generating engagement and generating net bookings and profits. So right now, we have titles like Grand Theft Auto Online, Red Dead Online, all the social point titles, and there are five that are successful in the market. NBA 2K Online in China, WWE Supercard, which has been downloaded more than 20 million times, and the list goes on. What he really means is starting to become clearer now. He continued, And at this past quarter, for example, catalog sales represented about 40% of our net bookings. So we have a company that, season in and season out, we feel confident can generate plenty of net bookings, can engage with consumers, and can generate a great deal of profitability. Well, when you see it all laid out there, it does seem pretty damning and self-explanatory, doesn't it? 
It points to the fact that Take-Two and Rockstar have been able to gain such huge profits from those aforementioned online titles, the main one being GTA V Online, and that it doesn't make financial sense for them to take their eyes off that income stream right now and instead focus on putting a brand new game out there. Or this is what they appear to believe at least. We aren't arguing that they shouldn't make a fortune from it, but long term it really doesn't seem like a good idea to erode the goodwill you've built up with a fan base of consumers by neglecting quality in the face of making a little bit more money over a shorter period. Like we said before, EA and what they did to the Star Wars IP should be a huge cautionary tale for Rockstar, Take-Two and any other big companies out there who are thinking along these paths. Now with that said, we don't want to sound too dramatic over this. The sky is hardly falling yet and we're not suggesting that Rockstar have turned into EA overnight or anything. Even based on comments made by Zelnik, it would be a lie to suggest that they look to be focusing entirely on profits coming in from online titles, as he did finish up by telling the investors, and of course, at the same time, we'll build our business with those frontline new releases. Given that we're a company that depends on our creative teams to make as close to perfect products as possible, we have to be willing to live with the vagaries of product deliveries. So it looks like they still do understand the necessity of giving their creative teams the space to develop and put out new titles. After all, no game, no matter how successful, can keep making money forever, and there will be a time when even the most hardcore of fans will tire of playing GTA V's online mode, so they're gonna have to have something else to take its place at that point. While this is a positive to be taken from the situation, it's only a small positive. The last sentence certainly does hint towards delays, and there was further suggestions of a delay with GTA 6 from Take-Two President Carl Slatoff, who stated with regards to any news on new titles, we're going to share more about the pipeline over the coming months and give you some more colour on what exactly constitutes that pipeline. So I'll give you a little bit more idea of what we've got going on with the new IP and existing franchises, free-to-play games, different business models, casual games, core games, mid-core games, and we're hoping to share a lot more information with you over the coming months regarding that. The fact that he's being so coy here and doesn't give anything new to report could mean that it's all being kept top secret, but we think it's more likely that he just doesn't want to out and out disappoint people until he absolutely has to. What makes this even sadder news is that it seems to further confirm that Grand Theft Auto 6 will no doubt be getting a release on current gen consoles. It appears to be the worst kept secret in the industry that launch dates for next generation efforts from Sony and Xbox, namely the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, are going to be announced in the very near future and will be ultimately hitting shelves before Christmas 2020. If GTA 6 isn't going to be coming until 2021 at the best, then it means the developers will almost certainly have to release the games for those consoles if they don't want it to look out of date already before people have even had a chance to play it. Not at all! Hey, we're alive, aren't we? Those psychos didn't kill you! Psychos?! Only you can get me chased out of a party with effing guns! It's pretty likely too that if the game does come out on the new PlayStation and Xbox, then they'll bypass the previous generation entirely, as it wouldn't mean having to downscale the game so it works on these consoles too, and Rockstar probably doesn't want to have to worry about that if they're trying to put out the best possible game they can with the best hardware at their disposal. It's a shame because a lot of gamers won't be getting the new consoles as soon as they're released for a variety of different reasons, and it will likely mean that they'll be left out when it comes to what will no doubt be the biggest release of the year. We would also be remiss if we didn't mention that Rockstar Creative Vice President Dan Hauser, developer of both the GTA and Red Dead Redemption series, left the company very recently, with a formal statement from Take-Two revealing that he had been on an extended break since last spring, and that March 11th, 2020 would be his final day with the studio. The timing of this one is pretty suspect, as this high-profile exit happened only days before Take-Two's latest earnings report and the subsequent statements regarding not expecting any new games to be released this year. We don't know the exact reason that Hauser left the company and we'll likely never know, but we will have to question whether or not this was tension over the company's business model in recent years. With Hauser being the creative vice president, you could definitely see him pushing for new titles. We have to ask then, is there more we should be worrying about here? Probably not, but we'll let you discuss that one further in the comments down below. As always, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more video game content.